Marquise Bolden came into the Gonzaga game off the game of his career. He was a defensive force against Auburn with seven blocks. His rim protection was a huge factor in that win for Duke, but each game has its own themes and that same rim protection just wasn't as relevant in the matchup with Gonzaga. The Zags have skilled bigs that can shoot the ball and they run great ball screen offense. Bolden struggles to guard in space, particularly in ball screens. So while he did earn that playing time during the Auburn game, the defensive results for Duke when Bolden was on the court versus Gonzaga was a disaster. Bolden started out the game giving up the first six points to Hachimura and Clark. In both cases, he sagged off of capable shooters. He gave up a similar three to Petrosev midway through the half. So right off the bat, there's nine points Bolden was solely responsible for. As you might guess, Gonzaga also exploited him on the ball screens. Here Bolden needs to get into coverage early. He's not mobile enough to be moving forward and guard Josh Perkins at the same time. He's in no man's land on the court and he even leaves his feet. For Gonzaga, Perkins is an elite point guard in ball screens. This no look pass gets Zion to bite. Gonzaga loves to run sets to bring their guards low, just to bring them back up to give them a running start into ball screens. Their most used play last night was this scissors set. Even though Duke opened the game trying not to switch, half the time they would do it anyways, and it just led to sloppy communication. Watch the difference between Delorier and Bolden guarding a ball screen. Delorier is low in his stance and has active feet to backpedal. Here's another set where Gonzaga brings Perkins low only to eventually get a ball screen, this time with a UCLA screen. Not only is Perkins a great passer, but the ability to shoot off the bounce if the defense goes under the screen makes him a really tough guard. The other way Gonzaga exploited Bolden was with rush out ball screens that put him in space. A lot of times they didn't even really set the screen, which makes it even tougher for Bolden to stay ahead of the play. But when other players besides Bolden were involved in these type of actions, Gonzaga just wasn't as effective. Towards the end of the first half, Duke finally committed to switching everything, and the results were much better throughout the rest of the game. They even tried to switch with Bolden, who actually does his job here, Perkins just hits the contested long two. With 16.36 to go in the game, Bolden subbed out and never checked back in again. Instead, Coach K played smaller lineups. This adjustment did work last night, but is it a good strategy for Duke going forward? The biggest potential problem for the small ball lineups is if Jack White is a versatile enough one-on-one -on -one defender. The more you switch, the more opponents will resort to simply just picking on the best matchup on the court. For Gonzaga, they chose White guarding Hachimura. White wasn't perfect, but he had some crucial stops and overall definitely proved himself worthy of guarding bigs going forward. Gonzaga has about as strong of a front court as anyone in the country, and against a lot of teams, there will be a lesser player than Hachimura to put White on. It's not that Bolden has no value as a rim protector, but in this particular matchup versus Gonzaga, Duke probably wins the game if they pull him earlier in favor of White and Deloria. A 
Sure, the crunch time offense for Duke was a little ugly. RJ Barrett had some tunnel vision on his drives and Duke's spacing broke down, but don't get it twisted. It was Duke's first half defense, particularly in ball screens, that resulted in the first loss of the season for the number one team in the country. Knocked away, and Gonzaga wins it. 